Hello and welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's poem is by an English poet named John Clare. He lived from 1793 to 1864 and is known as one of the, the best um, rural... He was the son of a farmer and became known for his, uh, his poems about English countryside, English farm life, and uh, his sorrow at its destruction in the 19th century. Wikipedia tells us that his biographer, Jonathan Bate, called him, quote, the greatest laboring class poet that England has ever produced. No one has ever written more powerfully of nature, of a rural childhood, and of the alienated and unstable self, end quote. I'm going to read from a poem called Badger today, and I'm going to do that because, as I've been doing all week, I'm going to, I, well, I opened at random from Harold Bloom's anthology, The Best Poems of the English Language, and this is the poem that I opened to. So I'll read it, offer a few uh, comments with an assist from Harold Bloom, and then... Um, read it one more time. So here is three stanzas from Badger. When midnight comes, a host of dogs and men go out and track the badger to his den and put a sack within the hole and lie till the old grunting badger passes by. He comes and hears. They let the strongest loose. The old fox hears the noise and drops the goose. Poser shoots and hurries from the cry and the old hare half-wounded buzzes by. They get a forked stick to bear him down and clap the dogs and bear him to the town and bait him all the day with many dogs and laugh and shout and fright the scampering hogs. He runs along and bites at all he meets. They shout and hollow down the noisy streets. He turns about to face the loud uproar and drives the rebels to their very door. The frequent stone is hurled where'er they go when badgers fight and everyone's a foe. The dogs are clapped and urged to join the fray. The badger turns and drives them all away. Though scarcely half as big, demute and small, he fights with dogs for hours and beats them all. The heavy mastiff, savage in the fray, lies down and licks his feet and turns away. The bulldog knows his match and waxes cold. The badger grins and never leaves his hold. He drives the crowd and follows at their heels and bites them through. The drunkard swears and reels. The frightened women take the boys away. The blackguard laughs and hurries on the fray. He tries to reach the woods, an awkward race, but sticks and cudgels quickly stop the chase. He turns again and drives a noisy crowd and beats the many dogs and noises loud. He drives away and beats them every one, and then they loose them all and set them on. He falls as dead and kicked by boys and men, then starts and grins and drives the crowd again, till kicked and torn and beaten out he lies and leaves his hold and cackles groans, and dies. In the anthology, Bloom writes that John Clare is, quote, frequently a major poet, an eminence obscured by the proximity of Blake, Wordsworth, Coleridge, Byron, Shelley, and Keats. The son of a farm laborer, Clare was an authentic peasant poet, which the more sophisticated Robert Burns both was and was not. He is remarkably free of self-consciousness, a freedom that gives his best poems a superb purity and directness of address. They have an immediacy that is very rare in poetry of any period, end quote. One of the things that you'll, you've heard me talk about a lot on this podcast is the concept of pace, the, the way poets present, the, the, the way you're supposed to read it, the speed at which you're supposed to read it, and the way poets slow you down and speed you up. And one of the ways that a lot of poets will do that is through in gym and the idea that line bleed into another line. There's no punctuation like a period or a comma or something at the end of the line. Claire here has a poem that is very fast moving. It's very exciting. It's, it's, it's a battle essentially. And he keeps the pace very aggressive. And yet he uses very little enjambment. I just read 48 lines or, or something thereabouts in these three stanzas. And there's maybe only six or seven examples of enjambment. And in fact, the whole poem is a series of rhyming couplets, which I find often slows me down. So, so Claire uses this very uh, specific formal structure which gives it a sort of air of a of an ode to you know like you might find in Shakespeare or or in the ancient epics to a to a great battle, so it has that tone and yet he's able to keep it moving, um, keep the pace very aggressive, um, and I think that shows the skill of a very great poet, you know some of what Bloom is talking about there, so something to keep an eye on or at least an ear on while I'm while I am uh, reading this this poem one more time. 
So here's uh, three stanzas from Badger. And by the way, Bloom only includes three stanzas. He doesn't include the first and the last stanzas because he says they actually diminish the poem. But if you want to look those up online, you can you can find those pretty easily. I just am reading these three stanzas because I'm following the rules of looking up at random uh, in the uh, Harold Bloom anthology. And so I'm going to read what he included. Uh, that's, the, that's the rules that it would seem. So again, here we go. When midnight comes, a host of dogs and men go out and track the badger to his den and put a sack within the hole and lie till the old grunting badger passes by. He comes and hears. They let the strongest loose. The old fox hears the noise and drops the goose. The poacher shoots and hurries from the cry and the old hare, half-wounded, buzzes by. They get a forked stick to bear him down and clap the dogs and bear him to the town and bait him all the day with many dogs and laugh and shout and fright the scampering hogs. He runs along and bites at all he meets. They shout and hollow down the noisy streets. He turns about to face the loud uproar and drives the rebels to their very door. The frequent stone is hurled where'er they go when badgers fight and everyone's a foe. The dogs are clapped and urged to join the fray. The badger turns and drives them all away. Though scarcely half as big, demute and small, he fights with dogs for hours and beats them all. The heavy mastiff, savage in the fray, lies down and licks his feet and turns away. The bulldog knows his match and waxes cold. The badger grins and never leaves his hold. He drives the crowd and follows at their heels and bites them through. The drunkard swears and reels. The frightened women take the boys away. The blackguard laughs and hurries on the fray. He tries to reach the woods, an awkward race, but sticks and cudgels quickly stop the chase. He turns again and drives the noisy crowd and beats the many dogs and noises loud. He drives away and beats them, every one, and then they loose them all and set them on. He falls as dead and kicked by boys and men, then starts and grins and drives the crowd again, till kicked and torn and beaten out he lies and leaves his hold and cackles, groans and dies. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening. I'll be back tomorrow with another poem for you.